Folks, I'm very excited about today's word on the street. Have none other than, I mean, he's a legendary voice, a hit maker from, I would say, Rock's Golden Age, front man for Head East, also the front man for Petra that introduced rock worship to the world. He's not slowing down anytime soon, and he can still nail it better than Bon Jovi. <laughs> it's none other than John Schlitt. How you doing, John? Well, thank you, but what an introduction, man. I'm, I, I'm, if, if you could tell, I'm blushing. <laughs> well, it's, it's always easy when it's true. I've always done that with you, John. Uh, may I tell you what, you know, there's a lot of people in the news that are out doing concerts and outperforming and, you know, it doesn't matter how low they, they, they lower their songs to, to, it didn't even resemble the same songs. John, you're still hitting those notes. As far as I know, my gosh, one of the most incredible vocalists, uh, I've ever heard, uh, your signature sound, man, is, is unforgettable and infectious. Uh, you're always putting out new, new albums and stuff. Your album go is fantastic. You've got Thank all you. kinds of new stuff coming on the horizon. John, catch us up on where you are in the world and what you're doing. Well, I'm trying to be available. Really, <laughs> it, it all comes down to being available. As long as God allows me to sing, as long as he allows me to function uh, way beyond my age, uh, I'm supposed to do what I do. And, and buddy, I just, I have an urge to bring out new stuff. You know, my style is 70s rock. Um more vocal oriented. I love harmonies. And it's always been my cup of tea. And there are people out there that want to hear that kind of music. Now, are they the young generation? No, not right now. But music cyclic, and you'd be surprised. So I, I really feel that uh, being able to do the music style I do and bring the message that's eternal uh, is, is a great challenge, a great honor to be able to do it. But I better do it to the to the best of my ability, and I try to do that, you know. And again, um, people say, "How how do you what do you do with your voice?" I said, "I do anything that I'm not supposed to, because <laughs> it's it's God's gift, buddy. It's nothing that I've ever done. And for some reason, um, I'm allowed to sing the high notes. I'm allowed to still have the the rock sound, and um, and be real with the message that God puts on my heart. So you put that all together, and that's a John Schlitt uh, sound, I guess. Uh, the Go record, which is is the oldest new record that I think I've ever done. I mean, what is it, two and a half years old? And it's brand new. Uh, thank you, COVID. Uh, <laughs> and it, it, it says, it's funny, the whole theme is to get out there and go. And what happens a week after, the week after it comes out, I am totally stopped, you know. But, hey. What can you say? There's time. It's going to happen that the uh, the band is put together now for any touring uh, punch, punch, you know, uh, hype, hype. If you want to uh, a, a go uh, uh, tour, I'm here. I got the band. I'm ready. Been ready for a long time. But um, not to mention, uh, you know, I'm working with uh, uh, the Union Citizens and Saints and we're going to have a new album out by, right. I guess, uh, August 29th. Wow. Um, with singles coming out now about every month, I guess, uh, at least for the th next three or four months. Wow. And, you know, and then the Jay Seculo band is ridiculous how how much fun that is and how entertaining <laughs> and how useful it is. So, uh, right. you know, God's opened up doors. All, I, all my responsibilities walk through. Well, and you do that so well. Uh, you're not limited to anything, John, you know, I mean, you're even a carpenter. I mean, most people don't even know that, you know, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, but you know, the last time we did a, a television interview, it was one of the CBS segments uh, that I do um, a let's talk. And, and you were talking about uh, the reunion with, with head East and mm -hmm. man, I tell you what, that must've been something. What was that like? Actually, that was, that was many different feelings that culminated together. One was uh healing. Yeah. One was really being able to get together with brothers that you were very close to for, oh my gosh, in my case, seven years, wow. uh, they were family. Uh, and the way it broke up was very harsh. Uh, it was a lot of hurt feelings for, for me. Uh, but as time went on, I realized it was God's plan and it, it couldn't have happened. It, it, it was great the way it did happen. And after many years, I was finally able to get back and thank him, you know, and say, you know what, 
you fired me. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. And the reunion thing lasted for about a year. Uh, not many shows, but a lot of a lot of communication, a lot of uh, being able to uh, get together again. And uh, um, Mike Somerville was the fourth of the five members of the band. Uh, Dan Bernie died, uh, of course, drugs and alcohol. Right. Um, and so we had the four of the five of the original band, and we were able to get together and do the original album, Flies of Pancake, which was really a classic of that album. Oh, yeah. Or of that band. And with the new band, there were all a bunch of great guys. So it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun, great music. Uh, being able to sing all those songs on that album, first of all, was I wasn't sure if I'm going to be able to do it, but praise God, it was this. You really did it. Challenge. No challenge. It really compared to, <laughs> compared to what Bob put me through with Petra. Uh, the Hedy's thing was a piece of cake. So, uh, <laughs> so that was fun. And again, uh, it, it was over. It. Meanwhile, in that uh, Michael passed away um, uh, last year and we had one more show to do uh, to finish that. And we did it without him, but it was, you know, a very, very nice culmination of, of the year and a half or whatever, not counting COVID. I guess it was actually over a three year period because of COVID, right. but we finished it officially and it was nice. And now I'm buddies with the guys that fired me and, and seriously, they were part of my documentary coming up sometime in the future. Hey, and all right. So, so, um, it was all, it all ended up being a very good thing. Well, and a good thing, it was the reunion. And again, you know, before we started taping, um, talking about how David told God that my life was written in your book before I was born, John, had you not left Head East, you never would have been at a point in your life where you were ready and desperate to make a change, mm -hmm. almost going the way of of uh, your other friend. Um, yeah. Yeah. And your yeah. wife told you, you told yeah. me you'd meet this preacher and you agreed to go and meet a preacher. And that yeah. would not I, only I change went, your... Went with an attitude, came out with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and and uh, listen, you you and I both know that my intentions were to commit suicide. Yeah. And uh, uh, full, totally made sense to me at the time. That's how the enemy had lied. And I guarantee the enemy already had me checked off his list going, another right. victory. But God never gives up on you and walked out with the Holy Spirit and it's changed my life. And you're well, right. If, if, Petri, if Hedy's hadn't fired me, I wouldn't have become a Christian. No. I'd be six feet under. Petra, as I look back now, the hindsight is so amazing. It was like God designed me to be the, the front man for Petra right. when it was needed. Oh, yeah. Seven years of ridiculous experience in front of thousands of people in the secular world. Five years of becoming, a, a I hope to, to say, a, a heavy-duty Christian, a, a, a someone who could walk the walk in a safe way without making a fool of himself every time he turned around. And, um, and that was what Petra needed. They were the biggest Christian rock man in the world. And they oh, needed yeah. a front man who was a pro, but was strong in the Lord. And uh, I, seriously, it was like God knew what Petra needed. And I was, and he designed me to be that. And I don't know sure why he allowed me to do it. I don't know why I was chosen, but I thank him every day for it. Well, I'm grateful for you, John, because <laughs> your time with Petra, not only. Well, you're just a good friend, though, buddy. Come on. Well, even before I was your friend, John, even before I was your friend, you know, um, seeing that preacher coming to Jesus, surrendering your life, changing your life, changing the lives of millions, ushering in a whole new era of worship. My gosh. But. You know, one of the many great songs that you did uh, was a song called This Is My Prayer. And at a very, very dark time in my life, mm. uh, that song uh, that you sang with the mm. Petra Band, and of course, I, you shot that video, I think, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in a very beautiful, classic uh, church uh, yes. somewhere around there. Yes. And um, 
But, you know, John, we never know the impact that we make uh, through the airwaves. You know, you talked about the 70s and the young people. I've, I've, been, I've been hearing 80s music in children's cartoons for 20 years. Now I'm hearing more of the 70s. You're right. It is cyclical. And what's amazing is, as I interview people like you and people like Ted Nugent and, and others, uh, people that take Americans back to a better time, no matter what you were going through at that time, it was a better time in America, some would say. And, mm-hmm. and, and for a lot of us, especially those who listen to your, your music with Petra again, and even the music that you do with the Jay Seculo band and you and John Elefante, formerly of Kansas and all the fantastic songs. The music was phenomenal. I don't know that there's been anything phenomenal after uh, uh, 90. I don't know. Maybe I'm biased. I mean, you know, uh, but you have, you guys have always been phenomenal. You've always been fantastic. And you're still singing like that, John, if not better, you know, and, uh, but all that to say is, is, is uh, aside from the amazing vocal abilities and, and the timeless uh, hits uh, that your signature sound is on, you're an amazing person and you love your wife and you love your kids and, and the impact that you're making, even still there, the, 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 there's a, there's a hundred different messages that you're giving just by living and singing and breathing and doing. And it's not an accident, John. And so I pray folks that just as you've seen this website, the bottom of your screen, this entire show by all of John's music and, and also this new union, uh, this band, a union of sinners and saints. You got it. Uh, it, only wow, what three, it only took you three interviews to get it right. buddy. <laughs> Well, <laughs> hey, I did it, John. The third time to charm. Good, man. good job. You know what? Even yeah. that name. Uh, there, there's people who don't know the Lord, or people who who have have walked away from the light, or people who've lost hope, or people that are de church, so they want nothing to do with God, or or maybe they love God, but they want nothing to do with His children, or or those who claim to be His children but don't act like it. Even the name, uh, a un- union of sinners and saints is a grace statement that anybody can get behind. Uh, even a hardened criminal can hear that title, that name alone. And folks, the music does not disappoint. The music's fantastic. Bill Smiley uh, of Whiteheart. And Bill's an incredible musician and, and singer and producer. And Bill's a part of the team. Who else is on the team of, of Union of Sinners and Saints? Well, we have uh, Jason Fowler, who's got, who's got, is really one of the most real people I've ever met. Great singer, great guitar player, had his history in the secular world in, in Atlanta. Uh, he's got a testimony that's ridiculous. Uh, he was saved out of alcohol and just thanks the Lord every day. And because, it, see, you can tell, especially Christian artists that have gone through the secular world and got a second chance and absolutely realize where that chance comes, you can tell their passion as far as their, their music style, their, especially rockers. Oh my gosh, let's face it, rock and roll is a very exciting, passionate music style. And it really leads itself to some songs that can really say it all. And he, he he's, I don't know if he's to, is quite as rock as, as Petra and Whiteheart in some cases, then he's more rock. I just well, anyway, Jason's a fantastic addition. Uh, probably the three of us will go out on tour this this uh, year, just to, uh, with the storyteller tour, which we've found out actually works better because it allows us to we'll play acoustic but with rock and tracks, and it's a big sound, but with the three vocals and. Um, and stories that explain why each song was created, this kind of thing from all three wow. of us. It's a very cool evening. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Actually, we're playing at all the places that we played <laughs> three years ago. Uh, they wanted us back because it was it, and I have a feeling it's going to be uh, very exciting. Um, love to spread spread it out. Right now, it's mostly in the Midwest. I would love to spread it to the rest of the country, but. Because we're not the the flavor of the hour and being played on every Christian radio station, uh, it's hard to get the message out there. So 
we just let God do it. And we just, uh, we play where, where we're allowed to. And we serve the purpose that we're supposed to serve. And who knows, maybe it'll spread as time goes on and we'll be able to be in your neck of the woods also. Would love that. Of course, you and I talk about uh, bringing you. I mean, you're still doing solo uh, concerts as well. Yeah, and I've got I've got a great band right now. Believe it or not, just three guys, so it's not a lot of expense. Uh-huh. But three guys with with uh, tracks that uh, and that's the way to go. You use uh, three live guys that sing, play guitar, bass, drums, and sometimes the fourth guy would be a keyboard player. But tracks are so easy that you just bring those in, and it just makes for a full fledged live rock sound with a budget that's a lot less for people that can that make it more affordable to bring in a big sound with with uh, with affordable um, competition. You know, John, um, in, the, in the television world, I've been surprised uh, how easy it is to not only produce television, positive television, true television, mm-hmm. but to create things that is not dependent upon the old machine, the old mechanisms, the old system. I can't help but wonder how hard would it be to have a, I'm sure there's tons of them, internet radio stations uh, that play nothing but this genre. And, um, you know, I I think that we need, I always love doing things I've never seen before. And you have always been an innovator. Maybe it's time to do something that is outside of the uh, confines of the limited system you talked about flavors of the week and such and you know i gotta look inside the the the, the music industry and especially the christian music industry and and um so many incredible people some of the best musicians you'll ever hear are people mm-hmm. who who are people of faith because and i will got, say and i, and I yeah. will say young and old yes uh, the i i say the flavor of the hour that's because that's how the industry is working right now. Yeah. And some of those, some of those bands, some of those artists are amazing artists, but they fit a formula that really doesn't, I, I don't know if it's quite as evangelistic as when we were doing our thing. I may be wrong because I don't, I'll be honest. I think I you're should right. not criticize anything because I don't listen to much Christian radio anymore right. because it's it's just not my cup of tea. It's not it's not the formula that I saw or that I see that can be useful in in God's plan. But a lot of people love it. It there's a lot of great big concerts and and God has His plan in that. It just it's not my cup of tea now. So well, you, you know you know there's there's music with a cross on it, and then there's Jesus music, and when you made the stand that you still make, it was about Jesus. Amen. And I don't think anybody could argue the fact that today, well, we just seen a difference, you know, just like, just like my grandfather was, uh, uh, fighting Nazis, you know, when he was 17 years old, uh, uh, he lied about his age and saw a a propaganda film at the movies and was going to steal his parents tires. And, because tires were very viable uh, during that time. And his parents said, no, you don't have to steal the tires. You go ahead and, you, you know, just go into the service. And he did. And he uh, became a colonel, uh, uh, a, a colonel in, in, the Air, in the Air Force. He was in the Marines, Army, Navy, Air Force. And then today's yeah, yeah. 17-year-old that not all of them, of course, but, you know, need a safe place and stuffed animals and are offended at everything and are triggered. and confused about who they are. I, I see the same thing reflected in, in music. It's not necessarily Jesus music. It's music with a cross on, but, but the themes back in the day of never say die, you know, and, and of course, you know, a little later, this is my prayer. And, you know, I heard you even sing Judas kiss, you know, uh, uh, one of the Petra songs as well. And, you know, just strong statements of faith and fighting the good fight and fighting evil and being fearless Versus what we hear today, oh God, help me make it through the day. And you know what? I was raised by a warrior. I have a warrior heart. I know that you do, John. And something just tells me that you don't have a problem just making it through the day, that you're an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. And we we call out 
deep calls to deep to those of you who are watching all over the world is we come together in lock shields as warriors, as overcomers who boldly and fearlessly proclaim that Jesus is Lord. And we proclaim that to the death and, and we're not for sale and we can't be bought. You know, John, even right now with, with your vocal abilities, I know uh, that the secular world would still have a place for you. If you just put the Jesus thing down, if you just didn't talk about God, if you just went the way that they're going and, and of course, even as the industry too, uh, during, during your origin time, uh, you know, with, with head East and, and you made music to make music, man. Now music is just made to sell and it's very forgettable and it all sounds the same. And the same people seem to own it and run the show. Uh, sometimes <laughs> even in the Christian music industry, I hate to say, but John, you're still shining bright. You're still burning that torch bright. I want everybody to go to the website, the bottom of your screen, buy all the music you can. Now, I've already bought go, but I want to get more. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, But John, what would you have to say to, right now to musicians who have been given the gift? It's in their blood. They love God. They, they may not be religious, but they love the Lord. They know that Jesus, I mean, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to deny by watching the news. The Bible is true. What would you say to the musicians, young and old, who want to continue to make great music and to... Uh, well, this, this music? might surprise you, okay? If you really sincerely want to sing about Christ, do it. Do it with a full heart. Do it to the best of your ability. And don't compromise. God deserves the best. Do not compromise. Never say it's good enough because it's Christian. Always say, I'll do my best. It probably won't be good enough uh, because it's, uh, it's dedicated to Christ, but I'm going to do my best. Now, if you're doing it just as a jump over to be a big secular star, don't. Don't. I'm not saying don't try to be a secular star, it's just don't use Christ as a crutch to do it. Be sincere in whatever you do. If you want to be a secular artist, great. Be a secular, be a secular artist, a Christian secular artist. It's going to be tough. It's the world you're jumping into is not fun. It's uh it it's not friendly to you. But if you choose to do that, then do it to full of your ability. God gave that ability. Use it if that's what you want to do. I wouldn't recommend it, but do it. But don't use Christ as a crutch. If you want to be a Christian artist, do it. Praise God. God put it on your heart, but don't compromise. Don't try. Don't have an ulterior motive. Well, it's for the bigger populace. I, I'm going to tone it down. Don't tone it down. Stretch it out. Be as bold as you can be. And God will honor it. Wow. And you know, John, people that know you, they, you're so much more than a singer, too. You know, you're you're a, a husband, you're a father, mm -hmm. uh, a grandfather, and a grandfather. Yes. <laughs> you're also a carpenter. I think that's yes. so cool. You sing about a carpenter. You're you're <laughs> not just a carpenter. You're a master carpenter, uh, trained yeah. by one of the best. Tell me about your carpentry, brother. Oh, buddy, I, 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 you know. With the internet now, one of the good things about the internet, you can go to see what other people do. And I watch some of these guys on the, on YouTube that are master carpenters. And, <laughs> and I, I hang my head in shame. Uh, let's put it this way. I try my best. Whatever whatever project's given to me, I try my best to make, as, as I do in music to do the best I know how and, and be, do it my way, which sometimes as I watch the internet, I'm going, oh, I could have done it so much easier. What was I? But you learn from experience. And uh, uh, it's, it's a gratifying thing. Uh, woodworking is very satisfying. It's, it's uh, uh, the final project is so fun to look at and, and say, wow, that used to be just a pile of wood. And now look what it is. It's cool. It's cool. But <laughs> I'm also, you know, I also have a ministry that I've been trying to really concentrate on, which involves the woodworking and my wow. my musical abilities. And uh, it's called Build It Ministries. Okay. And what, what it means is, but the Lord do it, it's worthless. Right. And trying to use my, my woodworking to raise money for projects or try to use my singing 
to raise money for woodworking projects. You know, it's, wow. it's in other words, to go to a church and say, listen, I will provide music for you all. You charge tickets. And if there's a, uh, a need for your local church, you know, people maybe need a new kitchen or whatever, uh, or a new bathroom. Uh, let's charge tickets for this free concert. I will provide the music. You provide the, the venue and the, uh, and you know, all the details, uh, and we'll make money for this project. You know, it's just, wow. it, it's been one of those things I've wanted to do. And it, that part hasn't happened yet. People, I, you go to someone and say, listen, I will provide the music. Right. You charge tickets. And if it's worth it to you, let's find a, a, a local need and let's use it. And it's like, oh, I don't know. It, it's like, it goes right past them. And I, I so it hasn't worked for me so far. So the ministry I, has, doors have opened up to help people locally. Right. Uh, in, in special opportunities, which is very cool. And uh, so that's been taking up some of my time too. It, it's, wow. it's very gratifying. It's very, very gratifying to see that if you have an open heart, God will use it. Well, he sure will. And aren't you glad that he does? Oh, oh what a beautiful way to live. <laughs> life, is more, life is richer right now for me yeah. than when I was touring in Hedy's and touring in Petra all over the world. Uh, I get a little dose of that. I still get to go out and and use my voice uh, uh, with people uh, actually all over the world. I'll be in Germany uh, in September. I'll be, uh, uh, you know, just wherever God leads me. But but now the woodworking, the raising my grandkids, uh, uh, the ministry, uh, writing writing more with the with the the Union of Sinners and Saints and with Jay Seculo and with Petra and my solo stuff. It's just, it, there's never a dead, a dull moment. It's very You're enjoying cool. your life, John. I am. And I praise God for it every day. Well, it's nice that you got a life like that. Well, I paid a couple of dues. Yeah. And three times and, over. <laughs> and, God, and for some reason, God is still allowing me to have a, a beautiful life. And I, I, you know, way past what someone my age should be able to have. And again, it's God. 